Hi guys, so uh, today we're going to uh, talk about the double angle formulas, which will be the last section of this unit. All right, so we will begin reviewing for your test tomorrow. All right, you'll work on the review tomorrow. We'll go over it Wednesday. Your test will be Thursday. All right. Okay, so find the sign of 2u. All right, so um, we talked about sum and difference formulas previously. So, and you can actually use the sum formulas to derive uh, the double angle formulas, right? So, for instance, we know that 2u is equal to u plus u. Agreed? All right, so sine of 2u can really be equal to sine. Oh, come on. Really? Okay, there we go. Right? All right. Of u plus u. So we can actually use the uh, sum formulas, all right, uh, to derive this. So we have sine u, cosine u, plus cosine u, sine u, right? Instead of u and v, we just have all u's. All right, well, since multiplication is commutative, which means the order does not matter, right? Sine u times cosine u is the same thing as cosine u times sine u. All right, so this is actually just equal to 2 sine u times cosine u. So... This is actually what sine of 2u is equal to. All right, so again, of course, whenever two things are equal in math, they are interchangeable. All right, so whenever we see this, we, were, we will be allowed to replace it with this. All right, let's talk about cosine of 2u. All right, so again, we can think of this as cosine of u plus u. All right, well, we have uh, our sum formula for cosine, all right? So here we will have cosine u, cosine u minus sine u, sine u. Again, previously, when we had u plus v, right, we would have cosine u, cosine v, minus sine u, sine v. All right. But since it's both u's, everything is a u here. All right. Now, of course, cosine u times cosine u is cosine squared u, right, and sine u, sine u is sine squared u. So cosine of 2u is equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u. So again, wherever we see this, we're allowed to rewrite this. All right, now, we can actually also kind of modify this a little bit, all right? Do we have some other identity that deals with cosine squared and sine squared? We sure do, all right? Specifically, sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1, all right? So we can actually use that to manipulate this a little bit differently, all right? So here it says, okay, well, write what we just found out there that cosine of 2u is equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u in terms of sine u. All right, so we know that sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1. All right, so if I'm trying to solve for sine u, 
Um, well, no, no I mean, this isn't really, these aren't really problems, right? We're just deriving the actual formulas, all right? Um, but for cosine of 2u, there's going to end up being three different formulas, all right? This being one of them, and we're about to find one of the other ones, okay? So now it says in terms of sine u, so that means if we're trying to get everything with signs in it, that means I actually need to solve for cosine so that I can substitute for it, all right? So I can subtract sine squared u from both sides here, and we will get cosine squared u is equal to 1 minus sine squared u. Okay, so we know that cosine of 2u is already equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u. All right, well, again, in math, whenever two things are equal, they are interchangeable. So wherever I see a cosine squared u, I'm allowed to replace it with 1 minus sine squared u. So here I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared u instead of cosine squared u. And then I still have my minus sine squared u. All right, well, if I have negative 1 sine squared u and I subtract another sine squared u, exactly. All right, so here is another double angle formula for cosine. Rewrite cosine squared u minus sine squared u now in terms of cosine. All right, so again, I know that sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1. All right, so if I wanted in terms of cosine u, all right, that means I'm trying to get rid of sine squared u. Uh, which means I need to solve for it so that I can replace it. So again, I can just subtract cosine squared u from both sides, and we will get sine squared u is equal to 1 minus cosine squared u. All right, so again, we know that cosine of 2u is equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u. Well, I want it to just be cosines. Well, again, whenever two things are equal in mathematics, they are interchangeable. All right, so I can replace sine squared u with 1 minus cosine squared u. So I have cosine squared u minus, and then I'm subtracting out this whole 1 minus cosine squared u. Now, of course, you do have to be careful to distribute this negative to both pieces, all right? Um, this is kind of one thing that, um, for some reason, even honors pre-calculus students are very, very bad at, right? A lot of times when they replace it, especially when there's a negative in front of it, they won't put these parentheses around it. So they either only end up distributing, you know, like using the minus one, and then they keep this minus, which, of course, would mess it up, all right? So... To be mindful of stuff like that. All right, so here I have uh, cosine squared u minus negative. Well, let's just go ahead and distribute it so we don't lose anybody. So if I distribute this negative, I'm going to get minus 1 here, and then I will get plus cosine squared u here. All right, well, now I have like terms here. All right, I have a cosine squared u plus another cosine squared u. So that gives me two cosine squared u's, and then I have my minus one.
All right, so that's our third and final double angle formula for cosine, okay? So there's actually, we have three, right? We have cosine of 2u is equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u, right? Which is what we started with up here, All right? And then we have cosine of 2u is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared u. And then we also have cosine of 2u is equal to 2 cosine squared u minus 1. All right, so depending on what else you kind of have in your equation or situation, it kind of dictates which one of these you choose, okay? Um, obviously, like if you know cosine, then you want to use this one, right? If you know sine, you would want to use this one. If you have cosine and sine, you can use any of the three, right? It doesn't really matter. Okay. For a cosine of 2u. Absolutely. All right, so now we want to find um, a formula for tangent of 2u. All right, well, again, this is the same thing as tangent of u plus u. So we can use our sum formula. All right, and this would be um, tangent of u plus tangent of u over. 1 minus tangent of u times tangent of u. All right, so again, this is just our sum formula, which we're used to seeing at u plus v, and this was tan u plus tan v over 1 minus tan u times tan v. All right, but since we're doing both u's, everything is a u. All right, so of course we can kind of combine some things here. Tan u plus tan u is simply... 2 tan u and tan u times tan u is tan squared u. So this is our tan of 2u double angle formula. All right, so let's go ahead and put these into action a little bit, okay? So given that tangent of theta is equal to 4 thirds, find the exact value of each trigonometric function. Okay, so um, it doesn't really tell us what quadrant we're in here, all right? Um, we know that we have to be in either the first or the third because tangent is positive, all right? Um, We'll just assume that we're in the first to make life easy. All right, so here's my theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, this is a 3, 4, 5. Of course, you could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to get that as well. All right, so that means uh, sine of theta, which we'll need eventually, all right, is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 4 fifths. And cosine of theta, which they ask for right here, is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths. Okay, well now we just wrote down our formula for sine of 2 theta, all right? And that is equal to 2 times sine of theta, cosine of theta. All right, so two, we know that cosine of theta is three fifths. All right, and we know that cosine of theta, I'm sorry, sine of theta rather is four fifths. I have those switched around, but of course multiplication is commutative and does not matter. All right, so this would be 24 25 and that's it all right 
right, so go ahead and try to do cosine of 2 theta. Now, there's three different formulas. Since we know sine and cosine, you can use any one of them that you want. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer with all of them. Okay, so do go ahead and try that. Okay, so for cosine of 2 theta, it doesn't really matter which one you use here. Um, I'll just use uh, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Alright, so in this case we have 2. Cosine, of course, is 3 fifths, so times 3 fifths squared. Alright, and minus 1, right? Uh, I know that this, because this denominator squared here is going to be 25, I'm just going to make it 25 over 25. All right. So this is going to be 9 over 25 when you square this. Multiply that by 2, you're going to get 18 over 25. So 18 over 25 minus 25 over 25 is negative 7 over 25. All right, now, we don't have any formulas here, all right, for secant or cosecant of 2 theta, all right, but why can I just do these? Yeah, because they're the reciprocals, right? So secant is going to be the reciprocal of, what's that? Absolutely. All you do is take the reciprocal and you're done, all right? So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So this will be 25 over 24. All right now, uh, we do not, right, have tangent of 2 theta, so we can't just do the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and find tangent of 2 theta. All right, so tan of 2 theta is equal to 2 times tan of theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. All right, well, our tan theta from up here that was given to us is 4 thirds. All right, so this is 2 times 4 thirds over 1 minus 4 thirds squared. All right, so up here we're going to have 8 thirds over... All right, this is going to be 16 ninths, all right? So 16 over, uh, I'm sorry, 9 over 9 minus 16 over 9, all right, is going to be negative 7 over 9. So we can keep, change, and flip. Of course, this will reduce. 9 over 3 is 3 over 1. All right, so this will be uh, 24 over negative 7. 
Oh, thanks. <laughs> and they had like hundreds of them. And I was like, I'm going to take some That's funny. Thank you. All right, so now that we have cotangent of I'm sorry, now that we have tangent of 2 theta, we can easily find cotangent of 2 theta simply by taking our reciprocal here. So negative 7 over 24. Good times? Had by somebody somewhere? All right, so that's it. That's how we apply the double angle formulas. Yes? So we feel like we know what... Um was uh, yes you mean sine of 2 theta like sine of 2 theta and cosine of tan theta sure you absolutely could have said that um, like cotan of 2 theta would have been equal to cosine of 2 theta over sine of 2 theta you could have done that use that identity as well absolutely Good times, good times. Fantastic times. All right. Why don't you guys go ahead and try this? So given that cosine of u is equal to negative four fifths and that u is in the second quadrant, find the exact values of sine of two u, cosine of two u, and tangent of two u. We do not. You do. Well, I thought you'd be jacked about some delta math. Yep. Indeed. Uh, it'll have some stuff like this. I mean, it won't ask you to find like three different ones. It'll just ask you to find one. But it's the same process.
Okay, so of course, in able to do this, first we need to set up our triangle, which it tells us is that our angle is in the second quadrant. All right, we use the fact that cosine of u is negative four fifths to get adjacent over hypotenuse. Of course, this is another three, four, five triangle. So using Sokotoa, we can get sine and tangent here. All right, so using our formula for sine of two u, all right, we get that that is two times sine of u, which is 3 fifths, times cosine of u, which is negative 4 fifths. All right, so this is negative 24 20 fifths. All right, again, for cosine of 2u, since we have sine and cosine, you could use any one that you want. I just chose 2 cosine squared u minus 1. All right, so that's 2. Cosine is negative 4 fifths, and we will square that. And minus, I'll go ahead and do 25 over 25. All right, so this will be 16 over 25. All right, multiply that by 2. You get 32 over 25. So 32 minus 25, all right, that gives us 7 over 25, indeed. All right, and then here we have 2 times tangent, which is negative 3 fourths over 1 minus tangent squared, which is negative 3 fourths squared. All right, so here we get negative 6 over 4. I know it can be reduced, but we can worry about that later. All right, and this will be 16 over 16. Uh, minus 9 over 16. All right, so here we will have negative 6 over 4, and I'm going to keep change flip. Of course, this would have been 7 over 16, so now this is 16 over 7. All right, so this can reduce to 4 over 1. So this is now negative 24 over 7. Good times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you easily could have done this divided by this. Like if you're doing all three. Tangent is sine over cosine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, yeah. Mm -hmm. you could have done that. I'm just teaching the double angle formula, so I want people to see it actually right. used. Yeah. Um, because especially if you're asked to just find tangent of 2u, 
right? You're not going to go through and find sine of 2u first, then find cosine of 2u, right. right? You would just use this formula. Um, do we really need to do more? Okay, so let's talk about this. All right, so use a double, and not angel, should be angle, formula to rewrite the expression. All right, so 10 times sine x cosine x. All right, well, this isn't exactly like a double angle, but I can kind of make it this, right? So I can really, do we agree that 10 is 5 times 2? All right. And that 2 sine x cosine x is really just equal to sine of 2x. All right, so this whole part here is equal to sine of 2x. So I can say, oh, okay, well, this is really just 5 times the sine of 2x. And we're done. All right, same thing here. If I factor out an 8, I'm left with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. All right, well, this piece here is simply one of our cosine of 2x double angle formulas. So we can simply rewrite this as 8 times the cosine of 2x. So that's just kind of going backwards. Any questions or concerns there? All right. Okay. So now let's solve algebraically for the exact solutions uh, in the interval 0 to 2 pi. All right. So this is kind of like stuff that was accidentally put on the, the quiz, right, that I said I would help people with, right? Um, so because this is cosine, remember we have two or three different options for cosine of 2x. All right, we want to use the one that only has cosines in it because we don't want sines and cosines. All right, um, so that's going to be cosine squared x minus 1. All right, and if you always get used to putting it in parentheses, then... If there's some negative or negative number in front of it, right, you'll always remember to distribute it. So that may be a good habit to get into, although it doesn't matter here. All right, so now this is cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, now, I do not believe that this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and uh, this should have been 2, right, 2 cosine squared x. All right, so now we can try to do our factorization here. All right, so 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and my b is 1. All right, so two numbers that multiply together to negative 2 and add together to negative 1, or to positive 1. So 2 and negative 1. So I will get 2 cosine x plus 2. And 2 cosine x minus 1. Of course, this is our take out the trash step. So I can pull a 2 out here. Can't pull anything out here, so it stays. And we throw that away. All right, so now whenever we have multiple factors set equal to zero, we set each factor equal to zero and solve. So here, cosine of x would equal negative one. And here, cosine of x would equal one half. Now it wants us to find all of our solutions on the interval zero to two pi. So that's radians. Right? These are unit circle values, of course. All right? Um, so here, 
all right, um, x will equal pi, that is where our cosine is negative 1, and over here, x will equal pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. All right, so that's just applying what we just learned, the double angle formula, into stuff that we've done before solving these equations. Cool beans? On your, yep, you will. It'll be given to you. All right, try this one. Now, are we going to use the same double angle formula for cosine here? No, we want to use the one that only has sine in it. So the one that's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so as kind of discussed, right, we are going to want to use uh, the double angle formula cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus, whoops, minus 2 sine squared x. All right, so that's what we will go ahead and put here. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine x is equal to zero. And we use that one because now we're left with only sines, which is what we want, okay? Um, of course, I don't like having a negative leading coefficient here, so I'm gonna multiply everything by negative one when I put it in standard form here. All right, so that will change to two sine squared x uh, minus sine x minus one is equal to zero. So again, we can go ahead and factor this. 
So this will be negative 2 and 1. Alright, so we will have 2 sine x minus 2 and 2 sine x plus 1. Of course, we can pull out some trash here. And we can't pull anything out here. Alright. So we throw that away. We set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So here, this says sine of x is equal to 1. And here, sine of x, we would subtract 1 divided by 2. So negative one half. All right. Sine of x is equal to one at pi over two. And sine of x is equal to negative one half at seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's it. For a small fee of nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how I'm trying to retire early, people. No, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I multiplied everything by negative 1. Because I, when I factor, I don't like my leading coefficient to be negative. Okay. Can it, still work it can. Mm -hmm. okay. can you just have to be a lot more careful with your signs. Okay. And I like to make it as easy as possible on myself. And I did that, like I kind of skipped that step. Like I talked about it as I was doing it, but I didn't show it. Cool beans? Cool beans. All right, so uh, that's it for the lesson today. Your assignment is on Delta Math, and you can have the rest of the class to work on it.